Enjoying your av this avalanche here. It's it's a pretty great truck. When are you bringing it back? Uh, well, I was wondering if I could maybe borrow it for the weekend. Why? Yo, Trade In Tuesday, baby, my favorite day of the week. I'm David Trace with the Autopian, and today we're gonna look at a 2004 Chevrolet Avalanche that got traded in to Galpin Premier, which uh, is a high-end car. So somebody might have traded this 20-year-old Chevy in for an Aston Martin, who knows? And you may be wondering, why would someone buying a baller car want an Avalanche? Like, is that the same client? Oh, the Avalanche is worthy, trust me. This vehicle right here, look at it. First model year was 2002, and GM in the 2000s really had some great ideas. They had the Cadillac CTS-V, the Escalade was just coming out, the GTO, the, you know, they had the Aztec, which, you know, love it or hate it, they had the HHR, the SSR, just a number of just wacky ideas. And this is probably my favorite 2000s era GM, just wacky machine. We've all seen this car probably. We've all wondered like, what's the deal? with all the weird cladding and like, what's going on here? Like, no other pickup truck has this, it's very strange. Why is the bed so short? Let's get into it. It actually looks really good. The paint looks actually really nice. This is an 04, so this is 20 years old. The headlights are faded like you'd expect. Look at the dash. Look, GM in the 2000s, especially in California, the dashboards would always warp. That looks fantastic. The door cards are nice, a little tear in the seat here, but no big deal. Okay, there's a cold brew in here and a Starbuck. There's some motor oil in here, which typically does not bode well. It usually means it's probably burning some oil. Maybe they just did an oil change and left the, the, the leftovers in here. Oh, what the hell? There's cardboard shoved into that window there. Clearly means that window is would fall down otherwise. I kind of want to test it. All right, here we go. Oh, there's a, crap, there's a piece of cardboard in there still. What do we think, what do we think? I mean, there's a little bit of play in it, and I just lost a piece of cardboard in there, probably permanently. This vehicle might have actually come with this cardboard from the factory. They knew this window regulator would fail at some point. What's this? Is a ra I didn't realize. This has a rear radio, it looks like. And you have rear vents. Like, rear passengers were living like kings. Storage here for your cup holders? All right, nice. Okay, this right here is called the mid -game. And it was the most just crazy, incredible idea. Pickup and SUV. Allows you to turn a six passenger into a two, three passenger or two passenger in this case, pickup truck with an eight foot bed. Okay, let's do this side. Got a Bass Pro Shop hat. Cush mascara. Okay, so this is flat. Now, watch this. See these arrows right here? It's basically saying twist, I think. Chris, can you rotate that one to unlock? You see there's a lock and unlock. Okay, what do we do now? Glass, I think, okay, I think we gotta take the glass. So there's this crank thing right here. So we gotta, oh, it. Holy smokes, the mid gate. This is incredible. There's a little spider right there. Um, look at this. This is an eight foot bed, essentially. It's enclosed because you've got the tonneau cover. You can put eight feet, whatever is in here. This is amazing. And you can take this glass off. Uh, somehow, I think. Let's go around the back. All right, so this is the tonneau cover. Okay, there's that. Oh, that was, that was, woo, that was satisfying. Nice. Oh, so good. Look at this, this is a third piece. Oh, oh. Okay, it's, it's apparently three pieces. What do we got here? What do we got to do here? Is there another little latch? Oh, there is another one of those satisfying little, look, if you ever see one of these at a junkyard, just feel the latch for the tunnel cover. It is the most satisfying little mechanism. Part two is coming off and I'm reaching over these sail pillars that I mentioned earlier. You will notice from the side, 
that there is no gap between the bed and the cab. Look at any other pickup truck. There's a gap between the cab and the bed. This is all one piece. So in order to get you the structure, the structural rigidity you need, you have this sail pillar and it improves sort of the bending stiffness of this body. If you can imagine the inputs from the wheels come in here, and if you imagine that this isn't here, you could sort of see the bed wanting to bend like that, right? And so this basically acts as a stiffener uh, to make sure the bed doesn't bend or twist. It's still body on frame, but it's all one piece. So that's the sail pillar. And I also heard that this is used to help with like buffeting if you have the glass out so it doesn't make as much noise. But the big thing is it's a sail pillar for stiffness. Now let's finish up this job here. This is so beautifully done. Look at these latches. Look at how great that is. Here we go. Oh, oh, look at that. Now what? Now I think we have to, I think we can get rid of this thing too. This middle piece maybe? Hold on, there's another latch here. Oh, there's a reason why this thing won 2002 truck of the year from Motor Trend because this is freaking epic. Look at this, look at the view. Eight feet of storage. I think that's maybe including the tailgate. I don't know, but in any case, this is freaking genius. Check it out. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah, baby, we're gonna party tonight. Look at this, it came with a bottle of Fireball. Oh, nice, we got a tow hitch. We got some ratchet straps, an adapter for the lights. Like this is, this is what you put in here. What do we think, Chris? You think this thing's gonna purr? Nice and smooth, or what do we think? Do you need a riveted together dipstick? Really? What's the point of that? What's that sound? All right, it says change engine oil. There's no gas. Well, let's just see, let's just fire it up. Driver one. Uh, let me rev it a couple times, see how she sounds. Oh yeah, baby. Beautiful day in California. We got a healthy American V8 and a wide open morning. Son of a... Chris, hop on in, let's cruise. Son of a truck. It's got the same coil sprung five link suspension in the back, which was a big deal. Every truck up until this point had leaf springs in the back. This thing, coil springs. Um, Look at it as a suburban pickup truck. How do I adjust? Okay, there we go. Look at this. I think the pedals are supposed to move with this, which is kind of incredible. A lot of things seem to work here. Well, the initial feel is that the steering is very buttery, nice and heavily assisted, hydraulic steering. Let's open this thing up a little bit and see what, uh, see what it's got. There is a clunk coming from the front end. We got absolutely no gas. How much do we want to, cha do we want to chance this, Chris? We beelining it to the gas station, or there's something wrong with the front of like the front suspension is not right. Brakes work, steering works. All right, let's see what this V8's got. Oh shoot, this is pretty good. It's pretty quick. 200 and I think over 250 horsepower. You know, sent through a four-speed slush box, but it, more than enough power for this thing. And I mean, it's kind of cool cruising with the back open. Not as long as a Silverado. Why would you buy this over a Silverado? I mean, it's supposed to ride better. Silverado doesn't, can't do that. It's just kind of like, um, I don't know. If I had to guess, the Avalanche and the Silverado probably stole sales from each other. What the Avalanche offered that the Chevy didn't, that the Silverado didn't, I don't know. Better ride, quirkier features, I'm not entirely sure. Truly incredible footage you're getting here. Truly exciting stuff. Okay, I'm not Mr. Moneybags here, okay? <laughs> Let's roll. Honestly, I could use this truck for later today. Can I borrow this truck? I need to get an axle from the junkyard. It would be perfect for it. Oh, I was wrong about the dash, of course. Look at that. It's great. This thing really does ride well. That is why you buy this over a Silverado. This thing rides fantastic. 
It's in great shape. The transmission shifts perfectly. The engine is smooth. The alignment's a little bit off, but this would be a great truck, like for junkyard runs and just general life. Getting checked out. Am I getting checked out? Probably like, that's a fine automobile. I wish my Ram had that mid-gate feature. Well, you know, we can't all be so lucky. Uh, it's always fun to look at storage. What, what, what if we have something in here? Let's see, what is this? A patch for a motorcycle club? You learn about the previous owner, you know? Maybe they were in a bicycle club. Maybe they liked to drink a lot of Fireball. General Motors transmissions are not known for being reliable. If you Google it, you just find a bunch of search results that are just like. One of the more common Chevrolet Avalanche transmission problems are described above, and they can become very unpleasant. The problem has to do with faulty for L60 accumulators, which are designed to act like a sort of shock absorber between shifts. That's really the concern, because the engine will last until the end of time. You know, I've always been curious about the Chevrolet Avalanche. I've always seen this, you know, this truck with all this plastic cladding and the weird sail pillars. And it always looked a little bit strange and I always wonder what is the deal with that thing? And now driving one, I completely get it. This is such a compelling machine. It rides so well. It's incredibly versatile. I think it, it looks different. It's comfortable. If you want like a daily drivable SUV that you can use as a pickup truck, this is Especially in O2, like this is the ultimate. The fact that they made a heavy duty version of this, most people don't know, they made an 8.1 liter, 2500 heavy duty version of this truck. That right there is the holy grail. I wish this were that. All right, two things we're gonna do when we get to the parking lot. First, I'm going to figure out what's going on with the steering system. Oh, shit. What the? While down here, what did I discover? Look at this. Freaking serpentine belt is not even attached. It looks like this is only the AC compressor pulley. So the air conditioning isn't going to work. So if it had been the alternator, we, Chris and I would have been stranded earlier. <laughs> Otherwise, look at how rust free this is. This thing is clean. I'm gonna call up Tommy, the used car manager and uh, see if I can borrow this for the weekend. Cause I got to grab an axle from a junkyard and my trucks are full of junk. I want to test out that. Tommy speaking. Oh, hey Tommy, uh, it's David Tracy from the Autopian. Uh, hey, how you doing? I, I'm great, how you doing? I'm enjoying your av th this avalanche here. It's, it's a pretty great truck. When are you bringing it back? Uh, well, I was wondering if I could maybe borrow it for the weekend. Why? But make sure you bring that thing back in one piece. I don't want to see any extra scratches on it. Oh, I'll be careful with it. All right, thank you, perfect. Thank you, Tommy. All right, All right you're welcome. Yep, bye. bye. I got a weekend chariot. Here it is. Here's the axle in question. Look at these bolts, they're just coming right out. Boom. Okay, now this axle is more or less free. We're gonna try to load this axle up into the avalanche. We'll lower the mid gate. That means I'm gonna unlatch these two. Okay, let's drop this glass here. Okay, so that fits in there. Okay, we have a lowered mid gate. Oh, it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be really rough. truck comes with a rubber liner on the floor on the on the bed seems like a good idea but it's a terrible idea it just you try to slide things in it gets caught on the rubber and the rubber moves but <sighs> the thing you want you want to be able to it to be able to slide on the bed that axle back there ah oh, yes the mid gate now the axle's not that long might have been able to fit it in there but there's a spare tire so it's nice to have that extra space this truck's badass rides well fit a bunch of stuff in it here's the thing if you buy a, a truck with an eight foot bed most of the time it's kind of a waste of space and if you buy a crew cab truck that doesn't really you know, with a five foot bed, sometimes you need the eight foot bed. This gives you both. I mean, it's just fantastic. Now, at the same time, if I got into an accident or I hit 
the brake's really hard. I would have a very heavy axle coming right toward me, uh, which is honestly a little alarming. Okay, so I uh, just got the axle back here to work. Here it is. And uh, I'm about to go watch the Super Bowl with my girlfriend who's walking away right there. But my hands are completely dirty. And unfortunately, uh, the keys to work are not here. I have nothing to clean my hands with. Let's see, an industrial cleaner? Not that great. I know you were all wondering, how well does Fireball work as a hand cleaner? And the answer is, not that great. Yeah, so much for that.